We'd like to thank Montecito Bank and Trust for their generous support in making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Scam Squad. Welcome to Scan Squad. I'm Patty Teal here, as always, with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson, and we have a very special guest who often joins us, and I'm so excited that she's back. Would you introduce her, Vicki? Absolutely, Patty, and it's been way too long since we've had this guest. We're fortunate to have back with us today criminologist, criminologist Judy Christman Yates who writes a monthly financial exploitation newsletter full of all kinds of very valuable information. And Patty, a recent item in her newsletter had to do with finding unclaimed property. And I'm definitely going to have her talk about that, among other things. But first, let me share this. I recently heard from a banking friend of mine, somebody who works in the fraud department of one of our local banks. And she was telling me about a new scam, and this had to do with finding unclaimed property. So apparently potential victims are getting letters saying that a federal class action lawsuit has been settled and that the recipient has been identified as a claimant to a portion of the funds. And the total value of these funds is $4,800,000. And apparently these funds are being held in trust waiting for these claimants to come forward. I would be so excited if I thought that I was getting $4,800,000. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that settlement? But unfortunately, I'm assuming there's some sort of a catch. Of course, there is a catch. And you have to send anywhere from $30 to $50 to a claim processing center. And just FYI, this claim processing center Claim Processing Center seems to be in Linwood Plaza, Fort Lee, New Jersey. That's where apparently these communications are originating from. And of course, once you send in this money, they will help you get your percentage of the settlement. And you have to send this money within five days. So once again, scammers are using two tools of the trade. Uh, they encourage people to act quickly. And of course, we're all greedy by nature. We want to get that money. And unfortunately, people have fallen for this and they've shared their experiences on social media. Big surprise, no one has gotten any money and they have lost the money that they sent. But there is a legitimate way to see if you have any unclaimed money or property out there and I have asked Judy to come on today and tell us about that. So welcome, Judy. We are so happy to have you. And first of all, please tell us what kind of uh, money or property are we talking about that could be claimed? Well, thank you, Vicki and Patty, for having me back on Scam Squad. Um, and yes, there is a legitimate way to access abandoned property. That's what this happens to be. And it goes to uh, government accounts. And there are a variety of links that you can go to. I always recommend going to the one that is .gov. But today I'm going to provide you one that has additional links within that .gov. Uh, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. So the common types of unclaimed property include bank accounts, um, safety deposit boxes, what would happen to be in a safety deposit box, um, stocks, mutual funds, um, uncashed cashier's checks or money orders, certificates of deposit, um, insurance policies uh, that have matured or terminated, terminated um, mineral rights and royalty uh, payments, trust funds, escrow accounts, utility accounts, and um, even uh, claims to a foreign uh, unclaimed property. So there is much, much more. And uh, the one thing it does not include happens to be and it's a little confusing. Unclaimed property does not include real estate. So mm -hmm. physical property is not included in this. Yeah, that makes sense. And actually, um, I have to tell you that I did receive some unclaimed property. I did file a claim and I did receive some. So this does work. But Judy, how do you file a claim? 
Well, there is a site, and I'm going to repeat it twice so that you can get it for sure. It's HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash www.usa.gov forward slash unclaimed hyphen money. One more time, that's HTTPS semicolon forward slash forward slash www.usa.gov forward slash unclaimed hyphen money. Okay, so to make that simple, I would say people could go to um, usa.gov unclaimed property and you would probably, it would probably direct you to that, to that site. Correct, but when you do that, I wanna make sure that when you actually go to that link, it does have an HTTPS in okay. front of it. Good, that's good. Okay, good to know. Now, is there a charge for filing a claim? Uh, no, there, there is no charge. Um, however, you may need to pay income tax on what it is that you're going to uh, get sure. back. Um, and there are people that are out there that actually do um, uh, go out and look for money for you. And there is a law that says that they cannot charge more than 10% fee uh, based on how much money it is that you're getting. But there's no reason for you to go to anyone else. You can go to this site and it's really easy to go in and follow the directions and uh, get, the, get, get what belongs to you. And what kind of proof do you have to have that you're the rightful recipient, if, if you know? What kinds of things well, the are there for, for each site? So you do your homework and you just follow the directions on that particular link. Okay, good to know. And uh, I know that people have been very successful in going to this site and getting property, myself included. So <laughs> it really does work. Now, in this same newsletter where we got this information about uh, finding unclaimed property, you also talk about Facebook fish claims, fish spelled P-H-I-S-H. Tell us what these are. Well, Facebook phishing claims is, like I've described before, it's Phishing, like F-I-S-H-I-N-G. The scammers are throwing out information and they're trying to get you to click. In this partic uh, particular case, um, they say someone tried to log into your account and uh, you need to report the user or you need to confirm that it's you. Do not do anything. They're just trying to get you to click on their information, on their link, so do not click. We've talked about it before and clicking can be really, really dangerous. You need to think about that before you do it. So if you uh, do have uh, a claim that you've been compromised, then what you need to do is just log into your account and go to Facebook without doing anything that the scammer sends you. Just go into your Facebook account and in uh, Facebook, you can actually um, let them know that you think you've been compromised. But in this, this particular case, you have not, they just want you to click on their links. And you do reference Facebook in your um, in the article here, so I'm assuming that that seems to be the ploy that scammers are using these days, telling you that your Facebook account has been compromised. Um, there are other ways that scammers can tell you an account has been compromised also, other ploys that they use, but it seems to be Facebook now that, that scammers are tagging on to. Well, so... Go ahead. Actually, they, they try everything. Matter of fact, just about an hour ago, my neighbor came over and let me know that um, he uh, got a text and said that uh, he had a TV that he hadn't paid for. Well, it was the same thing. And it's like, don't click on it, anything. Let's talk about this first. No clicking, no clicking. Don't call the numbers that they have on there. If you get anything that's unsolicited, you never follow that. You need to just get away. Don't do anything quickly, and uh, you go to go. You need to go directly to the legitimate site, and um, you know check on it. Don't click. Don't click. Very good advice, and we've certainly talked about that before. And and scammers were using Amazon for a while to try and get people sure. to uh, click onto a link, telling them there was a problem with their Amazon account. So now apparently it is the Facebook account. So thank you for warning us about that, Judy. Now, your April newsletter ends with a great checklist 
on how to protect ourselves from common scams. And we can all use a refresher course on this subject because many of us are still getting scammed. So first, tell us what kinds of scams that you are talking about, and you reference those in your newsletter. Well, in Consumer Reports earlier this, this year, they did a great article about protecting yourself, and they brought up five uh, scams that are so common. They're just played over and over. So the first is the imposter scam. You owe us money. So anyone pretending to be a government agency, a utility company, whatever it happens to be, uh, those are called imposter scams. The online shopping scam. Um, be careful what you're clicking on. You need to only go to uh, known sites, for example. And when a deal is too awesome, it probably is one you best avoid. It's going to cost you in the long run. The employment scam, um, a great job awaits you. Well, that's a perfect scam because what they're doing is asking you to give them all your personal information, sometimes even your social security number. And uh, you need to be very, very careful when you're looking for a job and what you're giving them. And so not only are they getting your personal information, uh, they oftentimes ask you for money up front to pay for uh, supplies or what have you. Do not fall for that. The investment scam is a big one. Um, there are big profits in that. It used to be that it was the gold scam. We're going to sell you gold. Now they're saying we're going to sell you gold and or cryptocurrency. And since cryptocurrency is kind of nebulous to most people and they're not really sure what they're getting, but they want to get on the in on the bandwagon, although right now the bandwagon seems to have left the station. So <laughs> just be really, really careful. Do not buy any cryptocurrency or any gold from somebody that you do not know. Go to a legitimate group. And uh, then the last one that they have is the sweepstakes scam. And that's a big one. They say, oh, you've won this money. Send us um, a tax, like a, a patriotic tax. Well, there is no such thing as a patriotic tax. And by the way, it is illegal in the United States to ask for money up front to win a prize. So if you win lottery, for example, they do take tax out of that, but they take it out of what you win. They don't ask you for money in advance. Anytime they're asking for advance money, it is a scam 100% of the time. Absolutely, and good, good reminders. We all need to understand that. And you know, it's amazing to me that that sweepstakes scam is still around. It's been around forever. I'm sure it's one of the original scams and people are still getting sucked into that scam. So Judy, you list four good practices to protect ourselves from falling for these kinds of scams. Could you please tell us what they are? Sure, and once again, this is from uh, the Consumer uh, Reports article. So first, trust your gut. You know, we have heard enough about all these scams and people trying to steal our money. Listen to yourself uh, and how you feel. Be very, very careful, do nothing quickly. And I recommend that you actually, if something uh, comes up, talk to somebody else. You don't need to do anything immediately. If it's immediate, it's a scam. The second one is don't respond. And what I mean by that is do check your caller ID. And sometimes that can be a scammer as well, but most of the time it is not. If you don't know who's calling you, never, never answer. Have them leave you a message so that, um, you can call them back on a legitimate number. Just be sure that you're not giving away any of your personal information. Number three is check before you click. We talked about that a few minutes ago. Do not click. You need to do your homework before you're clicking. If you get something unsolicited, do not click. I want you to do your homework about that and put your uh, mouse over uh, the URL address, over the address and look and see if it's legitimate. So, you know, just check before you click. There was something interesting that you put in your newsletter, and that is if there's a, a dot .ru at the end of a URL, it means that the link you thought was a local retailer was created in Russia. So well, that's very interesting. That is very telling. If you look at that link, there are two letters for each of the countries. You just go and look up that country. 
And obviously that's not some, somebody that you're normally doing business with. So you need to check and see who it is that is sending you something. Unfortunately, it doesn't come up automatically on your computer. You have to put your mouse over that and kind of hold it down and it will show you that longer address. But um, that was what I was describing earlier. And that is, I want you to go to a .gov. When you're doing something official, and there is a, a government address, it always ends in .g. Right, and your last uh, piece of advice was pay wisely. What do you mean by that? Well, pay wisely has several different meanings. So a lot of people now are using things like Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. Those are what are called peer-to-peer -peer, uh, methods of payment. Unfortunately, those are not nearly as secure as using your credit card. So use your credit card first uh, if you want the best protection rather than debit and, and you know, instead of these peer-to-peer -peer methods. And, um, you know, anytime that you're paying with uh, cryptocurrency, gift cards, uh, you know, they want something uh, electronic, electronically transferred, you know, those are red flags. Those are, those are scams. So be very, very careful. And you also talked about if you are going to pay by Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle, use them only with people that you actually know, because people do like to use those apps, but they are um, sometimes taken over by scammers. So just be sure that you know who you are dealing with uh, if you're going to use one of those person-to-person -person, uh, payment methods. Exactly. Only people that you know. All right. Well, you gave us a very good refresher course. Thank you so much for all yes. the that you had for us today. It's very helpful. And um, I love the idea of finding uh, unclaimed property. Oh, so I love that too. And, and thank you again so much. Now, can people uh, subscribe to your newsletter? You give so much information. I know they would, many of our listeners would really love to do that. Well, that is a very interesting question. Actually, it's something that I do as a community service. So I don't mind putting it out there, but you have to you know, let me know that you wanna sign up. And it makes me a little bit nervous, by the way. Um, so it's uh, yatesjc805 at gmail and ask to subscribe to that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Julia. You practice what you preach and you're very careful. So we yes. appreciate that. Absolutely. It was great having you back and uh, we're going to invite you back real soon because I just got your last uh, newsletter and it's full of lots of good information. So thank, thank you. you for having me. And I just wanted to add, we have a YouTube channel and we also are a podcast in addition to being a radio show. So subscribe so that you don't miss any of these important warnings. And Vicki, before we go, can you give your fraud hotline number? I can. It's area code 805-568-2442. Once again, 805-568-2442. Thanks so much, ladies. Until next week, Vicki. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Judy. Bye.